Hey everybody, I'm Amanda with DevExpress and welcome to our webinar, What's New in WinForms 14.1 with DevExpress Technical Evangelist Paul Usher. You'll see what's shipping inside our updated WinForms, WPF, and Windows 8 XAML subscriptions. From our Outlook 2013 inspired controls and the new tile nav pane to performance enhancements in our data grids. Thank you so much for joining us. I will now hand things over to Paul Usher. Thank you, Amanda, and good morning to everyone, or good evening, depending on where you're coming from today. Well, it's been a mammoth start to the week with the launch of 14.1, and of course, uh, the 24-hour live stream that we did. So I think we're all still recovering and in much need of coffee. So 14.1, we focused around the superhero UI, or the UI superhero. And you're going to see this little character appear on a lot of our marketing uh, and branding over the, the coming days, weeks, and months. And today what I want to talk to you about is the new features uh, and some of the new presentations and demonstrations that we included in 14.1 to highlight how easy it is to build some stunning UIs with the controls. In WinForms, we've added an outstanding nine brand new controls. These include some navigation elements such as the tile nav, tile bar, and office navigation. We've got some new editors with the token and breadcrumb editors. We've got the new toast notification control, and of course the transition manager, which you'll be seeing inside some of the samples. On top of the new controls, we've added some really cool new features and enhancements to 11 of the major controls for WinForms. Now when it comes to WPF, it as well as seen the new navigation controls added, such as the tile nav, tile bar, and the office navigation. We've also included a barcode control to allow you to add 1D and 2D barcodes to your WPF applications. There's some new services with the taskbar service, the toast notification service, and there's enhancements to eight of the major controls. But that's not all for WPF. We've also done some outstanding work inside things like the data grid when it comes to performance of uh, building the visual trees with conditional formatting and touch, uh, touch support with per pixel scrolling. There's also been some extra work put into the scaffolding to in improve the design experience inside WPF and Visual Studio. And then of course there's Windows 8 XAML which hasn't been left behind, it's got four brand new controls as well. Both the barcode control, it's got a really cool radial time picker, the new feature to the hub tile being a mosaic um, hub, and of course the date navigator control, which have all been designed to, to work really nicely with that touch experience. And there's also been a number of enhancements to the grid control inside Windows 8 XAML. But we don't want to spend all day inside PowerPoint, so let's switch over to the demo center and start exploring what's new in 14.1. So after you've installed 14.1, you can launch this demo center. And whether you're a seasoned user or new to our controls, it's a great place to get started and to experience some of the functionality that we include inside the toolbox. I'm going to take you through a couple of quick things on this uh, application itself to start with. The first thing to notice is the What's New panel. Now when you click the link, it's going to take you straight across to our website and give you a detailed look at exactly what's been included inside the 14.1 release. And everything that is worked on comes from the support sensor, so if there's a suggestion, if there's a bug fix or an enhancement, you can see at, at this granular level exactly what it's providing. Another important link, and it's also included at the top here, is the breaking changes. Now, obviously we take a lot of care into making sure that the releases are solid and we run a lot of regression testing and so on. But it's important that when you switch to a new version that you test your application thoroughly with the changes that we've made. And the breaking changes is going to help with anything that has been introduced that may affect your application. Talking of project upgrades, obviously it's imperative that you take a backup of your project before you actually um, 
install to a new major version. But to actually convert the project can be done in two ways. First of all, you could do it straight inside Visual Studio, or you can navigate to the DevExpress 14.1 Components, Tools, Components folder and manually launch the project converter. Now, when, once you've launched this, you could work on either a single project or a project list. If you've got multiple projects in a solution or multiple projects, they can be added manually to this list here. I'm going to work with a single project and I'm just going to browse to my desktop where I've got a 13.1 project to work with. Underneath the advanced settings, we could set things like a public key token. We can tell it to process read-only files, but be careful if your source is under a source control application. Here the check is defaulted to say create backup files, so we know that the converter is going to automatically take a copy of any files that it modifies. The other option here is to have the prompt whether you want Visual Studio to tell you that a project needs converting if you open it inside the IDE. I'm just going to hit the upgrade button and we're going to see that the project converter will run through every file inside that project. Now this was a little VB project that we had laying around from last year. We can see that the main project file has been upgraded and then a number of files get skipped. We can see that the license file gets upgraded and then any design files with resources have also been updated. I've been given a green light, the fact that the conversion is complete and there's been no reported errors. So at this point, I'd be ready to open that project inside Visual Studio. A couple of other important links on, inside the demo center is the getting started and the what's new. Now fortunately with the screen resolution for we'll GoToWebinar, you can't see the text, but if we click on the link, getting started, it takes you to the um, website and gives you some important links to help you along the way. And remember, if you have any questions about the, the software, the support center is the best place to go. Not just if you th think there's an issue or you're not sure how to do something, but if you've got a suggestion, if there's a feature that you'd like to see in a future uh, build, add it to the support center. Every ticket is looked at monitored and you'll receive a response from our world-class support guys. So what's new inside WinForms? Well, before we start into the technical demos, let's take a look at a couple of the applications that we've built using the 14.1 controls. Creating a fictitious company called DevAV, which is a audio-visual company, We've created applications across most of the platforms. You can see here that we've got this Windows-based um, hybrid app. We've got the Outlook-inspired Windows Forms app, and we've got the ASP.NET application. We've also got one for WPF. Today we're going to focus on the WinForms, so we'll start with the hybrid app. We've called it a hybrid app because it's designed to be used with tablet devices. Obviously the landscape's changing out there. People are using tablets more, whether it be the Microsoft Surface, which is my personal preference, or any of the other vendors that are providing touchscreen laptops and or tablets. So when we're designing a UI now, we need to be you know, conscious of that fact and make sure that we can provide a UI that works more than just on a standard desktop with a mouse. Let's just maximize this. Now we can see the introduction of one of the new controls straight away. What we have on the as far as the navigation is the tile nav bar, oh, sorry, the tile bar control. And quite simply I can click on each of these tiles and it's going to navigate me to a new page. Now hopefully you'll see the transition that's happening there as well, and that's using the new transition tile control. Oh, sorry, the new transition control. If I drop down the arrow on products, we're going to see that it can implement a sub-container to which I can put more content. It's kept out of the user's um, immediate view until it's required. And in this case, when I click on a button, it's going to actually filter the grid. 
Okay, click back on dashboard. Here we can see the grid view. We've got the new funnel chart on the right. We've got uh, a nice custom implemented style dashboard where we can have a look at different sales that have happened within this particular application. Now, one thing that you'll notice to start with, and I, we do know that GoToWebinar is, is causing some interesting paint issues, but rest assured in the in the release product, it, it doesn't do it on your desktop. But you'll notice that the scroll bar is missing. It only appears when I mouse over or I touch the grid, and then it's implemented as a very fine scroll in the right-hand side. So this is starting to take a, a, a new view on how UI should be uh, presented. It's something that you'd expect to see on devices such as the iPad. If we come across to tasks, we can see that we've got the collapsible style here, and again, implementing filters with summary information passed back to the tiles. So it's quite a, a new way or different way of looking at presenting such a UI. I'm going to drill into one of these records, and you're seeing a Windows 8 style dialog. So a dialogue that is, is full width, it's designed to be the, the white screen, and here we're seeing some of the touch-friendly controls. So if I've got the, the drop-down combo, I've got the date control, which of course makes it easy to flick through and change dates based on or using a finger or a stylus instead of a traditional mouse. The slider control, all designed for that ease of use and that rich interface. I'm going to skip across to sales. Inside sales, we can see we've got the rendered chart on the right. We've got the data grid in the center. And now we can see one of the other new controls that have been added, which is the chart range control. I can use select a range here. And we're going to see, as I move this across, the data in the chart is updated. So it's a really nice way to create a filter for your charts, for your grids, etc. And this is one of the brand new controls for WinForms. Now remember, we're looking at a, a complete 100% WinForms application here, uh, which is really quite nice. Come across to employees. You can see we've got the card view rendered. I can bring up an employee. I can access all that information, that rich UI. And as, as an example, you can do things such as implement extra reports. So here we're seeing for the selected employee, I can come through and pick up a, an extra report or an, as an example of being able to do mail mergers. So the, the actual application, we've put a lot of effort into making it as, as real world and the sort of things that you guys are out there building to show off a lot of these controls. Let's take a look now at the Outlook inspired version of that. It's using the exact same database, um, but there's some other controls and features that we can highlight. To start with, I want to show you something that's hidden all the way up here in the top left hand corner. You'll see on the as I do this, over on the right, we've got the new toast notification popping up. Obviously, you get to control the style, the content, everything about that uh, interface. But with the, this little feature on the top left, it allows me to switch between a mouse mode and a touch mode. Now, when we open this, obviously, if you're familiar with Outlook, it would look like a, a, a reasonable interface. Click on here, and we change it to touch mode, and the interface expands. It starts putting more space between each of those controls. So if you're working on just a touch device, it's going to make it a lot easier to access those features with big fingers. Switch back to desktop mode or to mouse mode and everything is collapsed back into place. So that's really nice. We've got the scrollable or the sizable panel here and with the employees I can switch between different tab bars and again it looks and feels as a, an Outlook inspired application. We've got the collapsible folder panel. And what I'd like to show you here, at the moment, if, if I click between these items, it's going to filter the data on the grid. When I collapse that panel, 
all those top levels are brought forward as quick access points or tabs. So as I click them now, we're going to see the grid filters applied. So that's a really nice implementation as well. Another new feature that 14.1 delivers is what we call a beak form. And we can see this as I hover over the employee. Up pops the beak form. Now you can put any content you want inside this container. Here I'm just going to start typing a person's name. It's going to filter. If I wanted to pop this form out, all of a sudden it appears over on the right hand side. It's resizable inside a panel and I can utilize that function as well. Close it and it becomes a beak form again. One thing that's really cool inside the DevExpress ribbon control is the backstage area. So when I click on the ribbon button here, we're going to see the backstage and you can populate this obviously with whatever content you want. But what's really easy to implement is things like print previews or exports. Here we can see that we've got an embedded uh, report view control. I've got the ability to resize. I could show multiple pages. And obviously I could export straight to any of the common file types that we support. What's also nice from a, a user point of view is the fact that here I've got an employee report that currently contains employee evaluations. But utilizing the backstage functionality, I can implement a quick button and now I've got a report that excludes the evaluations. The same if I come down to the print option. You can see how easy it is to implement uh, an Outlook style or an Outlook inspired print preview and functionality. Of course, everything that we've done here is available to you to look at inside the 14.1 release. Uh, we ship all these demos and you can play around and see how we've implemented some of these things. If I come along and say I want to create a new employee, we can see all the standard UI controls uh, that are required for that, including the validation. Okay, so now let's move on to some of the more technical demos. I say technical demos, it's more just a, a run through what has actually been included and some of the cool features with that. We'll start with the ribbon control. And here I'm just going to launch the Ribbon Simple Pad application. Now, recently Microsoft released Office for the iPad. And with that, they introduced a new style of ribbon. And that was one that is less screen intensive. It requires a lot less space on screen. So the engineers and designers at, here at DevExpress decided it would be cool to allow you to implement that inside your WinForms application for tablet devices. And that's exactly what they did. On top of the standard styles that we have, we've now got this option called Tablet Office. And as you can see here, I've got little switch controls, and I've got a nice, small, non-obtrusive um, ribbon control that I can switch between. And if we want to implement a gallery, you can see it takes the maximum resource available to display that while keeping the ribbon itself nice and clean and out of the user's way. So that's one new feature that we can look for in 14.1. The next one is to do with the rich text edit control. I'm going to jump in and turn a couple of things off here. But obviously we've got this really nice control. It allows you to open RTF files or the open format of doc files or docx files. Um, but one of the things that we've added is the ability to actually view third-party comments. So if you've got a document that somebody's done some markup on or you've done some collaboration with, you can actually now see those comments inside our extra rich edit control. You can see here on the right hand side the comments are then pointing back with this nice underline. I can also turn on a reviewing pane so I could see the comments in a more tabular or traditional fashion. And here we've shown you how to implement the to be able to limit what reviewers or comments that you see as well. So it's quite a, a nice little feature that slipped in there for the RTF control. Let's take a look at the spreadsheet now. Being in its second year, it's becoming quite a mature product. And we've been listening to all the feedback that, that you guys have been providing through the support center, through the emails, etc. 
and the spreadsheet simply keeps getting better and better with each iteration. The main thing, or one of the key factors that we have released in 14.1 is the protection for the spreadsheet. So here we've got a sample, a sample monthly budget, and if I come across to this cell here, it's not going to allow me to make any changes. It's going to say that, hey, the sheet's protected. If I come to the amount column, obviously, I'd expect to be able to enter an amount. Up on the toolbar, we've got this unprotect sheet. So if I click this, and inside the demo center, the password is shown down here as 123. I can unprotect, and now I can make any changes I want to the spreadsheet itself. If I click on the protect sheet button this time, I'm going to be presented with a nice uh, interface, which is going to ask me what I want to see or what I want the user to interact with. And you can see I can lock certain aspects. I can say that I don't want them to be able to format cells or insert columns or insert rows. So that becomes quite a powerful uh, feature and function. At the same time, I can protect the structure uh, of the actual worksheet. So I can say I don't want them to be able to delete or insert new sheets. And I can also lock down particular parts of the worksheet. If I select a range, I can say allow users to edit a particular range. And I can put a password on a range. I can assign specific areas to specific users so that they can only access their portion of that spreadsheet. So that's really, really cool. The other thing that I can now do is if I highlight a range, obviously you come to this little control here and type in my range. Okay, come back, and as I select my range, the area is highlighted. What we've also added is the fact that, if I come across to here, we've now got a name manager. And this basically allows you to simplify working with formulas and named ranges. So you can come through the dialog and you can manipulate, you can edit and specify the, uh, you know, whether it be particular comments about an area that you want to apply. You can set the scope, whether it applies to a sheet or the book, etc. And again, you've got the ability of doing that user level control. Next inside the spreadsheet control is the chart API. You wanted to be able to access or insert charts programmatically or work more at an API level with a chart, and we've listened to that. Inside the example, you can see both C Sharp and VB code. And on the right hand side, as I come through, I can select a particular chart, and we give you the working example and the real time view as to how that can be implemented. So I want to look at how to implement, say, a stock chart. Well, we can see how to create the worksheet. We can see what is required, how to set values, and of course how to work through the things like the axis, the scaling, the formatting. And we provide a large number of examples here on the right as you start to work through to allow you to include this inside your applications if you want to create charts programmatically. Another thing that we've pointed out in more detail is how to implement the mail merge. Now here what we have is a spreadsheet with a header, a detail, and a footer block. The header obviously just contains an image and some text. And inside the detail panel, we've bound to this list of fields across on the right. We've got a category name, description, and some other information. And then we've got a group header happening with products, etc. And then in the footer, it's just a mock-up of a purchase order form. So when I press the mail pr merge preview button, what we're going to see is a new instance of the spreadsheet created. As I scroll down, we're now going to see that populated. So it's another example of how powerful the spreadsheet control can, uh, is and can be used inside your application for things like creating tabular-based mail mergers. Obviously, this can then be saved either as a spreadsheet, you can do a print preview and export it to any of the standard formats that we supply. One of the things that Seth said recently on a presentation, we've got reporting covered on every level. If you want pixel um, 
pixel perfect reporting, then there's extra reports. If you want to throw some ad hoc reporting together, we've got snap reporting. And if you want tabular or this sort of boxed Excel style, we can imp integrate the mail merge straight into the spreadsheet control. So there's something really for everybody. Another example of this would be the invoice layout. So here we've got a mock invoice. We've got, again, our header and our detail, and it's bound to this data set on the right. We can see that the fields here are filled in. And now if I press the mail merge preview button, the new instance is created. Only this time I've got a separate sheet for each individual invoice that I might want to send to my customers. Okay, another cool thing for the spreadsheet is the formula lookups. So obviously from day one we've had all these really nice um, formulas built in. So here we're just going to look at the concatenate formula. But at this level, traditionally I would have had to come through and know that that's how you use it. So start putting parameters parameters. Now if you're editing this, you can invoke a dialog which is going to help the end user actually work through the formulas. Every formula, the dialog is going to change and prompt them for the arguments. As you see here for the concatenate, as I click on the last particular text box, it says, oh, you might want a new one, and we'll keep extending that accordingly. It shows you in the dialog exactly what's going on, whether the data is valid. It's going to show you the result at this lower section. And of course, I can click the button and interact directly with the spreadsheet if I wanted to as well. So that adds yet more functionality in here. So next, man, I've got a long list. Let's take a look at some of those data editors. We'll start out by looking at the beak form. We saw that in that um, the example Outlook inspired application, one use of the implementing the beak form with the control. But here, as I move the mouse over this button, we can see that the beak form will allow me to put any content whatsoever that I want inside there. Using the properties on the right hand side, I could say I want the beak location to be at the top. So this time when I move the mouse over, it's going to be presented under the area that I call it from. I can close the beak form using the little cross, or I can say that, let's display that again. At the moment, with the close and outer click um, required, if I move my mouse around, it's going to disappear. If I take that option off, the control will stay active on screen until I actually press the close button. Now, as well as being able to add any content I want inside the panel, I can also come along and add additional buttons in there. And of course, you can change the glyph and do other cool things are interacting with that control. We've also got a new breadcrumb edit control. Now, if you've used Windows Explorer, which I'm sure everyone on the call has, you'll be familiar with this style. Obviously, binding it to a list of folders on your hard drive is a real easy way to demonstrate it, but you can pass whatever data source you want into this control and work on a, a hierarchy. You'll see the events that are firing in the little event log on the right hand side as I move between them. If I click on the actual right hand side of the control, it turns into a standard text editor. I can control how many items are displayed at a time. So this time when I click on the drop down, we'll see that there's only six showing and I get a scroll bar invoked. I can update the root glyph with any image that I want. It can be a custom glyph or I could hide it completely. At the same time, I can also programmatically um, navigate through that control. And you'll see, as I say, go back, go forward, that I can do that within my code as well. So there's so many different places that you could implement this level breadcrumb style navigation in your next application. The next new control that made it into 14.1 is our token edit. Now, if you've used something like Outlook or other mail clients, you'll be familiar with this concept. As you start typing 
an entry into the box. I'm working with a set of months, but it would work just as easily with email addresses or anything else that is inside your data stream. I'm going to start typing February, and we can see that the drop down list appears. I can select from the list, and the items added to the control. Or I could just start typing and press tab, and it's going to add the item to the control. If I type something that takes it over the width of the box, you'll see that the control has got the ability of automatically expanding. Now you can obviously control all of that information on the as we see here. We can say that we don't want it to expand, or that we do want it to expand, that we want it to expand to a maximum number of rows. Now the value that's stored is, in this case, a CSV. I can change the separator to anything I want, um, not just what's on this list, but it might be that I want to store it as a hyphen separated or a semicolon separated value. And likewise, if I was to populate the edit value programmatically, the token control will then render using this functionality. I can do other things such as turn it from a token list to a, um, a standard edit control. I can say if I start typing say A, I might want to show the remove token from the option. So here we can now see I've got this little delete option from the drop down. I can even turn the drop down off automatically. So it adds yet another level of UI for working with the, the data on your next application. Thinking back to the brief look we had of those sample applications, we saw some of the work that the transition manager can do. Now here we're going to use a couple of images to, to demonstrate this, but effectively you can apply the transition manager on any component, container components. So if you're wanting to switch out information, whether it be inside a beak form or when you're building your UI, uh, as you saw with the, the hybrid application, you just want to transition between different forms. Here we've got a picture of some fish. On the right-hand side, I can change how I want the easing mode to, to be, whether it's in, in, out, or out. And I can also change the actual easing function. I can turn off whether there's a weight indicator shown. So my preference is off, and I can control the type of transition that's going to happen. So here I'm going to say I want to fade. When I click, we'll now see that beautiful transition fading between those images. Obviously, with each of the transitions, you then have additional things that you can do. You can say what frame rate you want, or how many frames you want it to fade between. So you can control all the different aspects of what's happening in that transition. But it provides a really nice, rich experience for your user. One of the other navigation methods that we talked about as being a new control is the tile navigation. This was inspired by the likes of Microsoft Dynamics. Here we've got a flat, um, I suppose, toolbar style. It can be, it can be docked at either the top or the bottom of your application. And you can control things such as the drop-down height. Basically, it's a breadcrumb style tile navigator. I'll drop down my first entry and I'm presented with a list of tiles. If I select the settings tile, we're going to see that's rendered at the top of the control is the word settings and it's telling me that it belongs to the dynamics menu here, uh, the Dev Express menu here. Drop that down to services. We can see that the event log showing exactly what's been selected. You'll also notice over here on the right hand side we've got a couple of other buttons. So if I click on the create button it's going to expand and give me some more information. Let's see what the difference was here. The DevExpress CRM menu gave me just straight tiles. The Create button, you can see that I've got some groups happening. I've got my Activities group with these small style buttons. And then I've got my Records group with the larger buttons. So I can interact with um, different ways of presenting that UI, but still keeping it clear for the user. One particular feature that I like, if I bring this to the bottom, is click on DevExpress or let's say show tile shadow. And now we've 
got this nice rich depth added to the menu, making it look as if it's got some 3D almost aspect to it. So again, allowing me to create a stunning looking UI. While I uh, grab a quick drink of water, Amanda, are there any questions before I move on? Uh, yeah, from Marcelo, what can be placed inside the transition manager, just images? Good question. No, it can be any container. So we're talking about being able to transition between forms uh, or panels. And the idea, I mean, the image one is an easy one to show you, but if we think back to the hybrid application, I'll just launch this again. When I click on the tiles uh, across the top of the hybrid application, we're actually using the transition manager to show you how that's moving in between um, the, the actual forms or the panes. We'll just wait for this to start up. This is the, the joy of go to meeting where it slows rendering down. But here if I click tasks, you're going to see that nice smooth transition between the different elements. So here we're just using a slide and fade effect between those. And that's a good example of the transition manager at work. Hopefully that answers the question. I think so. Any other questions? Um, well, there's several questions from stuff before, but I think you might as well finish your demo and then we'll go back through them. No problem at all. One thing just while I'm on this screen is the implementation of custom footers. You'll see here, this is the standard extra grid control. And I say standard, there's not much standard about the power of what we have inside the grid. But using the control, we've implemented things like custom um, footers and groupings. So you can see being able to do your own thing in the, in the grouping rows. I'll just minimize that one for now. OK, moving along. Uh, we've done the desktop UI. And next, we'll take a look at the PDF viewer. So the PDF viewer is one of my favorite controls, um, and it wasn't missed out when it came to 14.1. In fact, there's a couple of really cool features being added to it. The first thing that we can see is the Save As button here inside the viewer. Now, yes, obviously, as a developer, you can disable that if you don't want your client to have that functionality. However, here I could come along and I could save the PDF um, to whatever I wanted to. And if I go to my desktop, we're now going to see a copy of that PDF like so. What I think is, is probably one of the, the far cooler features is the fact that I can now highlight content. I can right click and copy. If I just open Notepad and paste, I can now paste that content into any other application. Not only can I do that with text, but I can also do it with images by open paint. There's my image. And it can be a partial image. So here I want only half a control or remote. Copy and paste. So you've now got the power to be able to select content within the PDF control and then take it out to any other third party application. One other feature that was added into the viewer is the ability to rotate the document on the fly. So here I'm going to rotate clockwise. And if I zoom out, we'll see that that applies to my entire document, which is just beautiful. And I can do that clockwise. I can do counterclockwise, etc. Obviously, if I wanted to save my document now, it would save it with that particular layout. One other feature that was added into the viewer is the ability to navigate to your most recently used places. So if I bring up the context menu, you'll see here that I've got this extra item called previous view. And if I click previous view, it's going to take me back to the last view I had. 
and I can do the same thing with the next view. So it adds, uh, I suppose, a little bit like a breadcrumb or a tracking to allow you to quickly navigate backwards and forwards through the document as to where you were. That's at this point with the PDF control, I want to make a, a quick mention to the doc server libraries. I understand that they're not necessarily, uh, well, they're platform agnostic, which means you can use them with across WPF, across our ASP range, anywhere that you want to access uh, or manipulate PDFs, XLS, uh, doc files. We've also got the ability to work with zip files. Uh, for those that don't know, we've got a compression library that allows you to create or extract zip files all within the DevExpress libraries. Now, here I've got a bit of sample code showing just how easy it is to work at a low level with a PDF document. We've got this method called extract pages. Now, if I was creating this application from scratch, all I need to do is bring in the docs and the PDF libraries, and then you, you can start doing what I'm showing you here. You'll see I'm implementing a new PDF document processor object, just called processor. And the first thing I'm doing is loading the PDF that gets passed in. So in this case, just some folder and my own PDF. Now there's a lot of power underneath that object. So if I go processor and then bring up the IntelliSense, we can see that out of the box, I can append another PDF document to it. I can add bitmaps. I can start deleting pages. I, in fact, there is so much power at this level, I can extract text. I can look for text. I can look for the password information, or I could save the document out. If I come one level down to the document itself, I get even more functionality. If the document contains forms, I can start um, having a look at what those forms are and all the different properties on the forms, so what fields there are. At the document level, I can come through and I can look at what the permissions are on the document. I can access things such as the author details, or I can set the, the, whether I want to be the author, the keywords, the metadata. There's just so much raw functionality inside the document processor. And in fact, if I wanted to delete a page from a document, as we can see, it should be as simple as three lines of code. Load the PDF, nominate the page I want to delete, and then save the PDF back out. No UI required no external libraries, no requirement for Adobe or anything like that, you've got that sort of power inside the PDF library. And exactly the same thing applies to our XLS and the doc um, file formats as well. So you can be working at a really low file level without any UI requirements. So that was a quick digression. So we have the PDF viewer, let's get back to the other demo. I'm going to jump over to WPF for a second. Um, a lot of what I've shown you inside WinForms carries across to WPF. And I know that uh, out there, a lot of the, the users for WPF, when they look at this webinar, they sort of go, well, you spend all your time in WinForms. It, it's interesting, the majority of the user base use WinForms, um, and that's a fact. A lot of people, if we look at the, I think, Amanda, you've got the, have you got the poll results from that question this morning, just on this call? Yeah, 65%. So just on this call alone, 65% were just WinForms. So it's interesting, with all the technologies that are emerging, we still go back to the tried and proven methods. But when, as far as WPF, there's been a lot of other things added inside the WPF um, libraries. Probably the, the number one shout out for WPF is the speed uh, changes inside the data grid. And if we, th if we think about what we put out on our Watch New page, one of the things that was added was the fact that the speed is now several times faster on the WPF grid. We've been back and we've rebuilt uh, the, the visual tree, we've used some lightweight rendering, and I think once you download and install 14.1, you'll be pleasantly surprised at the performance enhancements inside the WPF grid. The other things, we've, we've done some changes to conditional formatting, 
Um, Arag did a fantastic presentation in the 24-hour stretch yesterday as to a lot of features that have been added into this WPF stuff. Um, we've added touch support for the grid per pixel scrolling. On top of that, uh, there's been a, a number of changes to things such as uh, charting. We've now got, I'm going to show you this cool, this applies to more than just WPF, but we've got this really new cool chart type. Uh, scroll across charting. And there's so many charts to choose from. I'm looking for the new donut in donut. Nested donut, here we go. So we can see here that we've now got this nested donut. Here we're showing some information based on ages and then um, sex, so male, female. And you can see that I can have multiple donuts nested inside each other and I can control things such as, a, I suppose, what you call the padding between the rings. I can control how that looks. But straight away you can see there's another way of visualizing information that your users can really uh, embrace and, and uh, what's the word, benefit from inside things like that. Uh, we've got the, the funnel type chart. Um, the things that I showed you for WinForms as far as the spreadsheet control have all been brought forth into the WPF spreadsheet. So whilst the, the majority of the time was spent inside WinForms itself, exactly the same functionality has been added to the WPF spreadsheet control as well. The, the, there's a lot of work gone into the, um, the task bus, or the, some of the services. So we've got the task bus service for WPF. And we've been working on improving the design time experience with some new smart tags and some new services. There's improved scaffolding uh, inside there. And we're also exposing um, some of the, the MVVM framework onto things like GitHub. So there's lots of things happening when it comes to, to WPF. And it would be remiss of me not to show you a couple of little bits from the Windows 8 XAML control set just before we go on to take some questions. Now, given the, the ratio, I understand that not everybody's using uh, Windows 8 XAML controls. I just have to find the one I'm looking for. Um, editor's demo. Is this the one? Yay. But when it comes to Windows 8, there's some really cool things happening. Here I've got a, a time editor, and when I click on the edit box, what we're seeing is the implementation of a radial time control. And what's really cool about this is the fact that I can bring the inner circle to be my seconds. I can bring the middle one, which is my minutes. And so straight away, you can imagine standing there with a the touch device and see just how quickly you can set a time by manipulating these elements. If I come through, set that round, or I can set an AM or PM. We've got the date navigator control, which we have there, the date picker. And again, a really nice, easy way to get through all the different elements. The date navigator here. So here we've got a, a, a new control for Windows 8 XAML. And it allows me to, for example, select multiple dates really easily using my touch enabled device. So there's certainly been something for everybody added to the 14.1 control set. Looking at the time, Amanda, we've got uh, a few minutes left. Let's start taking any of those questions. All right, Paul, we have hopefully uh, a lot of questions <laughs> that have come in. Uh. <laughs> Um, all right, Shoot. so I'm going to go backwards just because what's most recent. So um, from Costas, can we programmatically open, change, save Excel files using WinForms, or is this part of a different license or product? That's a licensing question. I like technical questions. Um, the I'm, I'm actually just looking on another screen to make sure that what I'm telling you is correct. Um, but 
if you've got a WinForms license, then you've got access to the spreadsheet control. I'm uh, just seeing if anybody else is jumping on. Uh, uh, that's just the same question, Amanda. You, you're throwing me <laughs> off my game. Sorry. Yeah. Um, now, with the so if you if you've got the spreadsheet control, then you've got access to the underlying libraries as well. So yes, is the answer to the question. Awesome. From David, um, are the range? Peak panel, Win8 dialog, breadcrumb, and token controls shown in WinForms available in WPF? No. The the, the tile nav pane, the tile bar control um, is available in WPF, but at this stage, not the beat control. Um, it, it's not being brought across at this stage. Okay. Uh, let's see. question about conditional formatting from Martin. When you have a set of multiple conditional formats in one column, is it possible for the end user to change or remove one of the conditional formats off of one column? Short answer is yes. You, I mean, you can lock that down if you want, but yes, you can apply or your end user can apply um, nested or layered conditional formats on specific columns. Um, so I'm going back to my first answer, yes. Okay. Um, uh, does the PDF have an option for digital signature? Not at this stage. There is some pretty cool stuff in the pipeline for the PDF control. It's, it's uh, Obviously, we released it as a viewer last year in CTP, and then it started to become mature. We're seeing that functionality get added. You've seen from the lower level library as to the things that we've got access to, and you can just imagine where we're going to take that. So stay tuned for the next exciting episode of the PDF control. Uh, are there plans from Troy? Are there plans to implement PDF encryption in the future, or is it available now? Not sure I fully understand what you said by implement PDF encryption. Um, right now, the PDF security model we we uh, follow. So, if a PDF is secured, or you can actually secure a PDF with the library. Okay. Sorry, I'm just typing that out. All right. Uh, does PDF does the PDF control require a document server license? No. The the PDF viewer is part of the WinForm subscription or part of uh, part of the Universal. So, um, if you want to just be working at 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 a PDF level without the UI elements, then obviously you can look at the you can look at the the document server instead. Um, but certainly, any any licensing type questions, if I'm not if I'm not clear, then the team uh, either on the the chat support or an email to customer services, and they will put everything I'm saying into context or make it clear. Okay. Uh, with the touch view, this is from Jay Dell from way earlier at ten seventeen. With the touch view, is there some sort of keyboard that can be popped up when you go into touch mode? Um, I think that really depends on the underlying um, operating system. So I know that on my Surface, I've got control as to whether the keyboard pops up or not. I'm not sure whether there's a, a, a quick API that you can call within that to, to force that to happen, but that's not something I'm aware of directly within our controls. Okay. Um, rich edit support for Arabic in 14.1? Across uh, any particular control? I think the answer, the answer is going to cover most things. Um, RTL is supported inside, um, I think, some of the WPF controls. Um, it, it's a question that comes up so regularly on support and I think changes a lot on support depending on the control. So with that, my recommendation would be shoot a ticket off to support center if there's a particular control or technology you're talking about. Um, I know that the, for example, the new HTML5 uh, data grid 
has RTL support. Uh, we've recently added some Unicode support to some of the controls, but the, it is such a, a wide question that I think it needs to be answered on a per control or per technology basis. Um, all right, from Teresa, um, I don't I don't quite understand how we use this. Do we insert a spreadsheet in our program, or is the spreadsheet a DevExpress control? Sorry, say that one again. Uh, she says I don't understand how we use this. This is from um, earlier uh, in the webinar. I don't understand how we use this. Do we insert Do we insert a spreadsheet in our program, or is the spreadsheet a DevExpress control? Okay, so the, the spreadsheet control allows you to provide spreadsheet-like functionality, so everything that you'd expect inside Excel um, or your other favorite spreadsheet editor directly within your software. So you might want to um, give your users some functionality or all functionality. I mean, technically within a, within a couple of mouse clicks, I could create a a really comprehensive spreadsheet application that I could ship to my end users without any licensing implications. They wouldn't be required to have Microsoft Office and they could open and manipulate XLS files all with that single spreadsheet control. Does the rich edit control and spell check include a hyphen uh, dictionary like don't or let's? So. Wow, now we're getting really technical. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've look the, the the spell checker is a a great little tool. So let's open it up here and come in and go don't. So we can see it's it's recognizing the first word is correct, the second word um, it's not giving me don't as an option if that's what was uh, was at uh, sort of asked for. Yes. So that's what asked for. don't ask. I'm interested in the token editor. This is from Phil. Interested in the token editor for tags. Um, a reply to a blog comment indicated it's not good for that yet, but that an additional feature would be added to it. Um, to make it good for tags. Could you elaborate or do you know anything about that? Um, I'm not familiar with the, the blog post or the comment. Um, I'm not sure why it couldn't be something that you could use for tags. I mean effectively passing a data source to it um, as a list of potential elements that you want to display. So uh, my first comment would be to follow up with the author of the blog post and now that it's released see what the, uh, see what the feedback is. Um, and maybe maybe shoot me an email as well so I can get in uh, get in on the conversation. Um, are there any tips or techniques to improve the animation of the transition manager? On my desktop, the Outlook inspired demo app doesn't transition as smoothly as the actual Outlook 2013 does. So inside the transition manager, there's a number of different elements that you can tweak. Um, You can control the frame rate, you can control the speed and, and different things. So uh, the, the short answer to that is going to be play around with the different options that are there and see if that provides that smoothness that you're looking for. Otherwise jump onto the support center and ask one of the uh, log a ticket so that the, the engineers can have a look and see what is not happening if it's not doing everything that we said it should. Uh. Are any of the controls you demoed available in ASP.NET that you know of? That's a good segue into uh, Mahul's webinar this week. Um, <laughs> look, sh short answer is yes. There's uh, a number of things that we've looked at that have made it into ASP, um, but I really would recommend you jumping on Mahul's presentation for what's new in ASP.NET. Um, also, if you download the 14.1 release, there's a, a link. And I think Seth posted a link the other day to a, a great document which details what's new inside all the uh, all the components. And Amanda, if you have that link handy, we I can do. post it up as well, just into the audience panel. 
There it is. So I just posted in the questions panel. It's a link to, yeah, everything that's new in 14.1. Um, does the PDF viewer work with files containing text under an image, like document scans? Does read that question in again? Let me process it slowly. <laughs> does the PDF viewer work with files containing text under an image, like document scans? Ilya, maybe you could clarify what. Yeah, I'm. I'm probably not not understanding the question fully. Um. Are there any new addition to the themes in WPF? For example, the DevExpress dark style is available in WinForms and not in WPF. I see some custom color feature for WinForms. Is that a planned, uh, is it planned to bring that feature to WPF? I'd, I'd get shot if I was to sit here and tell you what's planned. That'd be, <laughs> Paul, no. Um, Let's just open one of these uh, one of these demos so we can get to the themes box. So themes for WPF uh, are looking uh, the, pretty much the same as they have done for the last couple. And we've got the touchline dark theme, um, which of course gives you a, a nice big bold view from a, a touch point of view, and you've got all your classic themes. Um, the Mulberry theme was added to the SP controls in WinForms. We've got the nice new color mixer, which I uh, I didn't sh um, show, which I'll, I'll do quickly. Um, so short answer to the question is not at stage. Uh, if there's specific themes that you think should be brought across, then submit a suggestion. Let the guys know. Be, be vocal. They will respond. And the more people that want a particular feature, the quicker we're going to see things get implemented. Um, now here I'm inside just one of the demo centers and I can invoke this really cool color mixer panel. And watch what happens in the background when I apply that color. You see it's now changed to green, it's changed to blue, changed to red. So you can actually tweak the existing themes and we've given you the ability just to maybe bring them more in line with your corporate colors. Now, if you're like me and you make a complete mess of it because you're color challenged, you can simply come back into the color mixer and hit reset, and it will take it back to its original style. So that is available for WinForms at this stage. Okay. Uh, does the PDF viewer support OCR from James? We had this question in the in the live stream as well. Yes. Um, I, I, I'm not really sure what is meant by OCR. Obviously, using the PDF library, you can access the text or any part of that document. So you can read the text, you can manipulate the text, do what you want with it. Uh, we're not providing any kind of um, OCR. If you've got a, a scanned image, we're not providing a functionality to read that scan the image and it try and match any text looking characters from it um, that that's a you know something that's very special and not something that we're looking into at this stage all right we have time for just a couple more uh, from David can the winforms color mix mixer preferences be saved and loaded Yes, ob uh, absolutely. I'm not going to say obviously because that sounds wrong, but yes. Um, ob <laughs> the, the, the obvious part would be that, as you'd expect, if, if you go through and set uh, a particular color to your, you want to make sure that that can be replicated without having to set it each time you start the application. Uh, Pedro's asking if you can show the search control. If I can show the search control. Oh, you see, Looking at the time, Amanda, I don't have no. <laughs> um, Look, the search control is something that was shown on the watch new, um, but something that has um, requires a little bit more attention, for want of a better word. So um, I will certainly, lo uh, in a, another webinar that we've got planned in a couple of weeks, I will look at implementing or showing that search control. But it, yeah, not today, I'm afraid. 
Does the rich edit control support hyphenation? Does the rich edit control support hyphenation? I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, okay. Uh, as an RTF control, if we can maybe get an example. Um, so, Frederico, if you can clarify or give an example of what you're looking for. Let's see. Um, WinForms token edit. Does the control store the order of items or is it just a set? The token edit, um, you're passing to it the, um, the data set that you want to display and as far as the actual edit value itself, it is just an edit value. So uh, it's going to be in whatever order the user enters it. Um, being a CSV or a, 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 some arbitrary value separated list, then obviously you can do what you want with it after that. Uh, where can we find the touch-friendly slider controls in WinForms? The touch-friendly slider controls, not sure I follow. Um. All right, I don't know, David, if you want to clarify on that one, let's see. Please. Uh, is the WPF version of TileNav any different from the WinForms version? Um, not as far as features go. I mean, obviously it's implemented slightly differently being the technology, but uh, it is something that, that the feature set uh, should be the same across them, including the win, uh, the ASP one as well. So, so Frederico clarified about hyphenation. If a word is really big and it's at the end of a line, based on a dictionary, we could hyphenate this word. So that's more. That's from his, so uh, does the rich edit control uh, support hyphenation? So if we go into here, uh, scheme, really. So that's. I'm not sure whether you can turn on um, or what what the functionality is there for wrapping. Um, I mean, obviously in this example here, as I type that word, it splits it. It takes it straight onto the the next page. So um, it's a great question. And one that I will get back to him on. Okay. The token editor is not available for WPF, correct? Correct. Um, David's saying that slider control you showed at the beginning of the demo. So. Um, yeah, I'm just not sure which, which when you say slider, um, when we've got the transition edit there, uh, if there's... Is it that swipe? Which one? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. So, sorry, I'm, I'm just not understanding the, uh, which of the, the cool controls. So if I go to employees, for example, I think um, there was one where we had uh, a slider control Um, yeah, maybe reach out with that one. Maybe yeah, yeah, this is a slider control, uh, or what I'd consider a slider control. Is that the one? Help. <laughs> uh, he says it was like a track bar, but was more user friendly for the finger. Yeah, so this one here, this is the percentage complete. So now, what was the original question? I'm looking for it. Where can we it. find that in WinForms? Okay, so that's a that's a standard slider control, um, and it would be the uh, the theme that's been applied to it. Um, we'll see that all these, I mean, all these controls here are the standard WinForms edit controls. 
uh, they've just been turned into the touch friendly mode. Um, here's a, I, I don't know, maybe this is kind of an opinion question, Paul, but it's from Enrique. He <gasps> says, if you, keep, if you keep adding features to WinForms but not to WPF, don't you think developers never migrate to WPF? <laughs> so keeping opinions out of it. It's, it's not so much adding them just to one and not the other. Um, I think generally what happens, as you've seen from those stats that we talked about earlier, we have a, the, there is many more users of WinForms across the world in not just our, our customer base but in general than there are to WPF. So what you'll find happens, the control will start out in WinForms, becomes mature, and then the, the popular ones are going to get migrated. So I don't naturally think it's a, an evolution thing. I don't think every WinForms developer is going to become a WPF developer eventually. Um, who knows where the technology is going to be in 10 years? But if there's a control that you want to see in WPF, and we have it in WinForms, hit the support center, put a suggestion in, the more people, the more voices, the quicker things are going to happen. Um, any changes uh, to the Gantt chart control? Not in this release. Is there something specific you want to see? Uh, again, reach out to me, ping me, tweet me, email me, or the support center. Okay, and we'll do one more. I'm just trying to scroll through here. Um, I've seen, I saw in the WPF that the grid cell can contain a text value and an image. Is that possible for WinForms without custom draw? Being able to do an image inside the, um, the grid control without custom draw. Um, that's a, a great question. I mean, again, the short answer. What is the short answer on this one, Amanda? <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think there is a short answer. <laughs> let, let me get back to you. Um, I, I'm, I'm reluctant to say yes straight off the bat without confirming the, the custom draw aspect. It's certainly not something difficult to implement. It's not difficult to implement a... Uh, an image inside the grid control, but as to the um, as to what codes involved or the complexity, I'd I'd want to work on a quick sample. Uh, Ryan asks, so is WPF going away as rumored? Not something I can comment on. I have <laughs> no no crystal ball into Microsoft technologies. Yeah. And then our final question, how can we use the flyout panel, meaning what can I put there? So the, the beat control, you can put um, anything, any content you want whatsoever. Um, it really is, it's, it's a container. It's something that you can populate with a grid control, or an image control, or another panel with other bits and pieces inside it. Um, it is literally just a container for you to do what you want to enhance your UI. All right. So I posted in the chat box, if we, if we didn't get to your question uh, because we ran out of time, you can feel free, obviously, to contact Paul. All of his information is there on Twitter at DX Australia or at PaulU at DevExpress.com. Or you can always email support at DevExpress.com. Um, they are amazing, and they will get back to you. Excellent. Make sure you check out the other webinars this week, ASP.NET, DevExtreme, uh, reporting. We've got somebody on every day going through some of the cool new features in 14.1. Yeah, we have uh, um, tomorrow morning reporting and dashboards with uh, analytics program manager Seth Juarez. Thursday, we have ASP.NET web forms and MVC 14.1 with uh, web program manager Mahul Harry. And on Friday, uh, we get DevExtreme with CTO Julian Bucknell to round out our 14.1 launch week. And, and you can what register a big for all week those... it is. <laughs> yeah, it's a long, long week. Uh, you can register for all of these launch webinars at devexpress.com slash webinars. All right, Paul, thank you so very much. That is it 
for this one. If you haven't already, please download and try 14.1 today. And just a reminder, when you leave this webinar, you will see a short survey. Please take a second to comment. We really, really appreciate your feedback. So that's it. Thank you for joining us. And of course, thank you for choosing DevExpress. Bye-bye.